Okay guys, I wanted to show you my roughed out 340 Victor. Got a part number underneath. Okay, shined a light through there. You can see, uh, did a little work to it. But with this one, because it is, it's so similar to a Chevy design, I already know what I want to do with the opening radius. As you can see, I missed a little spot. I'm going to need to get a small burr and just touch a couple spots. Like I said, this is just roughed out. So what I did is I roughed it out, and we float it. And when I say roughed out, meaning I did a, a rough gasket match. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, and you can see it's it's a little bit smaller than the gasket. And I do that on purpose. And you can see it's kind of rough and jaggy because I used an extremely rough burr to, to, to rough this out with. You can actually see a bit of overhang on this runner right here. That needs a little more work. It's always interesting when you look at work through the, uh, through the camera and sometimes you pick up stuff that you missed. Uh, the core shift on this manifold was not fantastic. Very rarely they are. Oh, I wanted to show you 2915. Not a cheap piece. This was bought brand new. Uh, wow. I think he picked it up from Summit. These, this is getting hooked up to the uh, EQ China heads. Okay, like I said, they're roughed out, so you'll, you will see some spots that I missed. I mean, if you take a look at the very end of that runner on the right, didn't get it. That's okay. It's good enough to do a pre preliminary test, right, between the porting, the radius entries at the in, uh, the inlet. Let's show that. Okay, all the entries have been touched up. Now, I haven't gone crazy and measured each one of these because I don't really think they're going to vary that much. Yes, I did do my tweaks to the dividers. They still have a sharp edge like they came with from the factory. I believe that sharp edge is there for a reason because right, the inner runners tend to flow a little better. So you put a sharp edge there to limit its flow a touch. I will bolt this to the bench and blow through it and do each runner, but I need to get an idea of what it's going to do on the cylinder head because I've had it with the cylinder head and uh, I already told the owner that it's going to get uh, the fin milled out of the, the short side and it's getting the chamber cut even though it's a lot of extra work gotta it's gotta be done okay the short side speeds are ridiculous so that's what we're gonna do actually i can see a big spot on that runner right there that i missed that inside runner but that's okay <clears throat> whenever i do a manifold i really have to go through it several times because i tend to miss a bunch of spots so i don't like to do that one thing that is important is this is actually quite a bit bigger than a Chevy manifold because the the Chrysler has got a higher deck height. This manifold is wider, which makes it more difficult to get in the middle of the runners with a six-inch burr. You have to remember, you're coming in through the plenum, right? Let's show you. Let's say you can get in about this far. You just make it. And some runners are easier to get into than others. You can tell because I always tend to nick, nick the plenum a little bit. It doesn't really matter because I'm going to hit it with my long board anyway. It'll seal. It won't be a problem. But no matter what I do, even if you cover that with tape or something, it still gets nicked. It's just... Uh, I need to get some extra long burrs. I don't know why you guys haven't gotten me some extra long burrs. Okay, different view of a different runner. 
Okay. Now I do pay attention to the taper. Now remember, when I gasket match these, I had to take a decent amount of metal out, so that changes your taper coming through. Let me show you that quick. All right, guys, I got you up on the stand, and uh, got a new gift for my one of my so many, so many admirers. Uh, actually, this is a really cool tool. It's from Fowler. It's an inside, it's an inside digital mic. Okay, but it's perfect for something like this that we're talking about. Now, this is the first measurement I've ever done with this, so be patient with me. Let's see if, let's see if you can see that screen. I don't know if you can or not. Okay, just zoomed it out a touch more, give you guys a little better view. Get my gorilla hands out of the out of the way, and this is perfect for checking our taper. Now you have to realize the taper can be height and width, right? But I'm sure there's a way to zero this right now. I don't know how to do that. I haven't fiddled with it. But if it does have a decent taper, our number should go up as we go deeper into the port. That's in inches. Okay, so by the time we're just about at the end, we're almost three inches tall, and then we're going to come out to our gasket size, a little over two inches. Nice little tool. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. This will get plenty of use. This is going to be perfect for doing bowls. Think about it. Oh my goodness. What a, I can't believe I didn't, I didn't even know it existed. Okay, let's take a look and see if the uh, roughed out Victor made any difference at all. So, you guys have seen this before. This is what it was. We took the bone stock Victor and put it on there. I seem to remember we were flowing about 270. So, we took a 50 CFM hit at uh, around 500 or so. Ouch, right? Hurts. It also completely stomped on our swirl curve. Look at this. Dead, dead, dead until 600. Because of the... Remember, it's got a curved port. The manifold is curved before it goes into the intake port. So it will change where the air is flowing inside the port versus a clay radius. All right, we know that. So, roughed out intake. When I say rough, I mean rough, meaning I I hacked the uh, intake gasket and I did what I like to do as far as my taper and my texture. Notice how incredibly rough the texture is. I do that for a reason. Someone's going to ask for the burrs. I'll show you the burrs. Okay, these are the two burrs that were used in this uh, porting project, okay? The high helix on the bottom and the aluminum cut, single cut on top. They do leave a different texture and they both work really well in different parts of the port. And it's, it's, the way it works is uh, whichever bird does the better job in that area is the one I go with. So, is there science behind it? Yeah, there is. Is it going to make that big a difference which bird you use at that point in the port? I don't think so. Okay, so don't get crazy about it. You have to remember, because they have different tips, right, one is much much more difficult. This burr is much more difficult to try to use vertically and use the tip. This one is much better to use the tip because of the way it, it, it's shaped. Let's see if we can focus on that a little bit. Okay. It's easier to use the high helix 
the tip. All right, the sides, they both work great on the sides. Okay, now how did we do as far as our flows? Well, you would figure it's a ported intake with better matching on the intake port. Let me show you what I did to, had to do with the intake. Okay, this floor had to be dropped a decent amount, probably over a hundred thousandths. And if you take a look at like that light reflection, the original casting came in at an angle like this and had a low spot right here. Well, that low spot's pretty much gone now, and it kind of keeps that whole ramp shape right to the edge now. So it didn't really hurt that much dropping it. And uh, we needed to do something because we literally had a dam there. Now, if you were pouring tons of liquid fuel down there, you may want to do something like that, but not going to be good for the flow. Let's see how we did as far as flow. Okay, how do we do? Down here, not bad. Plus, 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 plus. We start getting decent gains already by 200. Up nine, right? Nice. Good, good gain, good gain. Yeah, take a look at this. 220, 248.6. That's almost... 30 CFM. That's huge. And then we lose it over the short side. Okay? You can see here we lost it over the short side. It's just 220, 220, 220 all the way over. So the short side is getting gutted. To maybe today. I don't know. The garage is really hot. The little AC is having a fit. So I'm going to say we did good as far as our first cut on the intake. Now remember... The only thing that I would be changing at this point is the entrance to the runners and maybe that dividing wall of each runner if they were so out of balance they needed it. I'll, uh, I'll have to do a video on that. I, I have done videos on that before. They're, I don't know whether you guys want me to repeat stuff like that. You know, I hate to be one of those guys that has the same basic video like five times I think that's kind of stupid I've done other single planes where I showed exactly what I do to uh, equalize the runners we did that huge Ford that BME Ford manifold that was really cool uh, we did uh, 351 Windsor Victor Victor Jr. and a 302 Victor Jr. I think I did at least three of those manifolds like that I think I did my Victor, too. My, uh, my Victor Jr. for my Chevy. In any case, there's plenty of videos like that. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to do that with this. But take a look at what it did to our swirl. Now, I forgot to put the pluses and minuses in, but <laughs> they both have almost no swirl. Both sides. Almost no swirl until it starts to lose it over the short side. Interesting to think about. It really is. Um... I should include that they were all tested through my 770 carb. No spacer. If I put a spacer on here, these will all go up a few CFM. You know, I really like a spacer on a Victor. Uh, adds plenum volume, but if you're running a carb, that may not be exactly what you want to do because the uh, it'll change your uh, your signal to your boosters. All right, guys, I'm glad this was going to be a short little nothing of a video because it's already 14 minutes in. Thanks for hanging out. Oh, before we say good night, how much more work do I have to do, guys? We're at 248 CFM at 500 lift. I don't know if we can get what we got to get out of a, a 387 cube small block Chrysler. Give me, a, give me a horsepower estimate where we sit now, and we're going to work up from that. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.